a pleasant good morning to everyone joining us live on Zoom and Facebook. And welcome to this edition of SEMAP Live. I'm Ana Rose Ocho, the Program Director of the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines, and I will be hosting this morning's event. This morning's event is the first of many collaborations with our partners at UPAF Regulatory Reform Support Program for National Development, or UPAF Respond. We have worked together in several initiatives over the past couple of years, particularly the SCAN Dashboard and Incident Reporter app used to monitor logistics bottlenecks during the height of the community quarantine. Today, we come together again for a series of events we are dubbing Innovation Spotlight, in which we focus on how businesses have adapted to the challenges through their innovations and best practices. For this edition, we will shine the spotlight on the beverage industry, which was also affected by the manufacturing restrictions and in many cases, the liquor ban. We will hear from the folks at Pumera Wines and also have insights from our partners at UPAF Respond. But to begin this morning's prayer, we would like to hear from the president of the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines. Let us give a virtual round of applause to President Pierre Carlo Coraya. Good morning, good morning. Can you hear me? <laughs> Am I coming in clear? Yes, you are. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. Good morning. I'm so excited to welcome everybody today, most especially Dr. Henry Basilio, Dr. Gilbert Yanto, Dean Lidasan, and Mr. Jonathan Iperos. Um, it's been a uh, it's been a up and down year. Uh, 2021 is 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 uh, it's been a challenge, not as challenging as 2020, but a challenge nonetheless. Um, but we're very hopeful for 2022 as it comes along uh, in the, just in the next few more days. So just want to share that one of the values we at SEMAP strongly believe in is collaboration. By coming together with other stakeholders, we can reach common goals and achieve more than we could if we acted alone. Collaboration is in the very nature of supply chain. It's not just about moving goods from one point to another. It's about making sure that all players across a business are ready and able to serve their customers. It's about ensuring it is able to meet their demands eye to eye. It, but it, it's about ensuring the products reach them where, they're, where they want it, when they want it. It's about ensuring that suppliers and shareholders are also able to gain value out of the products they have invested in and resources in. This is true in our work with the companies we represent and also true in our work with SEMAP. As we continue to move the global competitiveness of the Philippine supply chain, many of the things we have achieved in re recent years would not be possible without collaboration with government agencies, industry partners, industry, industry association, non-governmental organization, and the private sector as a whole. Our continuing work to ensure the guarantee of a hampered movement of goods would not be possible without the help of other supply chain players. Feedback gathered with the help of industry associations from various points across the supply chain were presented to relevant government agencies, which we then acted upon. This led to several administrative orders that ensured goods are delivered without delay, as well as the development of the scan dashboards and incident reporting app, which provided a direct means of relaying these issues to the national government, especially during the time of the pandemic way back 2020. In recent weeks, we have also announced our certificate course on enterprise supply chain management. With our partners at the De La Salle University, this program is a revival of the certificate course we organized with the university in 2008. And has been several years in the making. After several meetings with industry experts and academics, with this program, which will, will have its first run in March next year, we hope to bring together the academic excellence of DLSU and the industry leadership of SEMAP to broaden supply chain education offerings to all. Those are the, just the two examples of how collaboration with other stakeholders can move things forward in our sector. This event you're watching right now is another. This is the first of several events we are organizing with the partner UPAF Respond, a five-year project which seeks to support reform initiatives that improve competitiveness, promote trade and investment, and ensure economic growth. 
led by our longtime friends and industry advocates, known, known in, in the supply chain sector, always helping us move the Philippine supply chain forward, Dr. Henry Basilio and Dr. Gilbert Yato. And as the worst of the pandemic winds winds down, we believe that by learning from how other companies were able to weather the storm, whether it be through technological, te technological innovations or operational best practices, we can better fashion solutions to our own challenges and ultimately deliver more value to our customers, partners, and shareholders. This is yet another way we can work together, whether we are directly involved in core supply chain functions or outside of it, to move the competitiveness of our business and move the economy along as we enter the new normal. By learning from each other, we can have a better idea of the steps we can take and the expertise we can take to make things better for our businesses. I thank you for supporting today's event and I hope to see you in our future events in 2020. For now, I would like to greet you a merry, merry Christmas and a prosperous, healthy new year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carla, for that update on SMAP activities to keep supply chain moving during this pandemic. So as mentioned earlier, we will hear from our partners at UPAF Respond, who have been working to ensure responsive supply chains through policy and regulatory reforms. To guide us through these efforts, we will be joined by Dr. Enrico Basilio, the Chief of Party of UPAF Respond. He is also Chair of the Expert Development Council's Networking Committee on Transport and Logistics and is a Senior Advisor with the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a warm welcome to Dr. Enrico Basilio. Hi, uh, thank you, Ochi, and uh, a pleasant uh, morning to everyone. Um, okay, let me uh, share my uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation. Okay, can you see it? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Okay, okay so thank you uh, for that generous uh, introduction, Ochi. And I think uh, uh, the only thing that um, you failed to mention in my credentials is that uh, I've been a friend of uh, SMAP for more than two decades now. So my uh, uh, relations with the uh, SMAP dates as far back as uh, 1998. So, uh, and I still uh, fondly recall uh, our uh, shipping immersion activities no, uh, in the past. Okay, so this morning um, I was given 15 minutes to in update you uh, about the transport related activities and advocacies of uh, Respond Project in collaboration with the uh, SIMAP, PCCI, and uh, Export Development Council and Field Export. Okay, so this is my outline. Um, I'll briefly tell you about the Respond Project and then um, I'll proceed to the uh, discussion on the shipping uh, concerns, the pass-through fees, and the port issues, and the decoupling of regulatory commercial functions of uh, some of our regulatory bodies, like the Philippine Ports Authority and the uh, and, uh, Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. Okay, so uh, about the project uh, uh, respond, or the regulatory reform support program for national development is being implemented by the University of the Philippines Public Administration Research and Extension Services Foundation or UPAP, so which is a partner foundation of the UP National College of Public Administration and Governance. So we re in this project is being supported by the United Agency for International uh, development. It's a five-year project. We started in 2019 and will be around until 2024. Um, the overall objective of the uh, RESPOND project is, is to en enhance the environment for trade and investment by making it more open and competitive. And to do this, we have to um, uh, enhance uh, market competition by removing or reducing uh, barriers to market entry and also improving the quality of uh, our regulatory environment. And the second objective is to strengthen uh, regulatory capacity and governance of our uh, regulatory bodies. And the overarching uh, or cross-cutting uh, objective of this project is to enhance and promote uh, citizen engagement, especially in, in policy and regulatory uh, reform advocacies. 
So let's now go to the transport-related uh, uh, issues. Uh, let me first tackle the international shipping concerns. Um, we, the Export Development Council Networking Committee on Transport and Logistics uh, organized a series of uh, meetings. Now, uh, of course, uh, participated in by uh, SCMAP, our friends from uh, Phil Export and the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and also PLMTI, um, where these uh, three main concerns were uh, highlighted, you know, the lack of international shipping uh, vessel space you know, in the intra-ASEAN uh, and the long haul, you know, especially the, uh, the, those going to the U.S., and uh, to the European markets. And of course, the high freight rate cost and uh, excessive local uh, charges. Okay, so <clears throat> we had um, uh, meetings, as I've mentioned, with uh, uh, some domestic uh, shipping lines, uh, uh, trying to encourage them to actually uh, provide international shipping service uh, to address this uh, vessel space problem. And I'm happy to inform you, and I'll discuss this more later, uh, that Iris Logistics, you know, um, actually uh, launched uh, uh, the maiden voyage of uh, Iris Pawai um, uh, last September 23 uh, to the U.S., uh, particularly the West Coast. No? So um, the launch was uh, delayed uh, by, uh, by some, uh, a couple of days. No? So the original um, intention was to launch it on uh, September 15, but uh, the actual launch happened uh, on the 23rd of uh, September. And uh, the good news here is that, of course, uh, Michael Ruber, who uh, is the chairman of the Royal Cargo and the Irish Logistics is part of uh, the Royal Cargo Group, uh, who is our ally you know, in terms of uh, uh, advocating you know, for uh, the removal of these, um, uh, many of these uh, local charges you know, being imposed by international shipping lines. You know, uh, in providing uh, shipping service uh, to our exporters uh, ensured that there are no unnecessarily lo local charges no, that, are, that, will, are, that will be imposed no, uh, to the uh, Philippine exporters who will uh, load at the uh, Iris Pauai. Okay, so these are just some of the highlight, um, headlines no, that I'm sure you've uh, uh, read uh, in the past. No? So, um, this was uh, September 8th of uh, this year. Freight rates continue to rocket uh, with no end uh, in sight. You know? uh, and that uh, local shipment delays uh, could stretch to the holiday season. You know? So uh, as you know, um, the American Chamber of Commerce and Industry together with other uh, foreign chambers you know, organized the Arancada 2021, last December 1 and December 7. No? And there was a midday uh, session on uh, logistics uh, issues um, where Michael Ruber uh, gave a presentation. So here it's uh, interesting. I uh, sought his permission for me to be able to share this with you uh, for those uh, who were not able to attend the, the forum. Um, the, this. Um, very interesting uh, fact no, that uh, container trade flows within Asia no, is uh, the one that dominates uh, global uh, container trade. No? Uh, 43.5 uh, million TUs in 2001. No? So that's already outstripped uh, the traffic going to uh, the usual traditional uh, destinations in the past. And then uh, another um, uh, slide no, that I borrowed from Michael is uh, this, no, that container freight rates increased dramatically you know, uh, between 2019 and, and uh, this year, October 2021. You know, and uh, the fearless forecast of uh, Michael Ruber during the open forum, uh, by the way, the session, I also moderated uh, the, the session where I asked him, so what is uh, his fearless forecast you know, as regards uh, container uh, freight rates. And he said that, uh, well, uh, we, we, we will, it will continue uh, to, to, to remain high you know, until uh, uh, 2023. So hopefully by 2023, it will uh, normalize. Okay. Now, uh, as I've said earlier, um, uh, one of the solutions that were, we were able to um, provide no, uh, is uh, this uh, service that was uh, provide, being provided now 
by uh, Iris Logistics. No, it's a Philippine uh, flag vessel, and uh, thanks to the Maritime Industry Authority of the Philippines, uh, Marina, uh, that the uh, was able to provide uh, or give grant uh, permit no, to uh, Iris Logistics to be able to provide international service. No? So. And uh, as I've mentioned earlier, the first uh, sailing happened from the Philippines all the way to uh, U.S. West Coast uh, on September 23. And uh, the vessel is due to arrive back in Manila uh, next week. So, okay, and uh, of course, it will continue uh, providing the uh, Philippine uh, U.S. Uh, service no? uh, in the coming uh, yeah, months and years, no? and uh, hopefully uh, this will also uh, encourage you know, other domestic shipping lines to follow suit. Okay. Um, now uh, another issue uh, concerning international uh, shipping is this uh, local charges no, imposed by the international uh, shipping lines. We know this slide, no? so you've seen this uh, uh, in many of my presentations, no? but. Uh, uh, the key, the core issue here is uh, uh, the lack of the lack of agency you know, uh, that uh, basically looks into this uh, issue. So, and therefore, without uh, any agency uh, looking into it, so there's no pr uh, proper regulation in place. You know? um, and uh, as a result of this, of course, we, uh, SMAP together with PCCI, Phil Export Export Development Council, you know, advocated you know, uh, for the uh, you know, to find solution to, to this problem. In, in fact, uh, when the lockdown was imposed in March of last year, you know, of course, we experienced uh, some uh, port, uh, port congestion at uh, uh, the port of Manila. And uh, there was a letter that was sent you know, by 14 industry associations, you know, uh, basically uh, requesting the government you know, to intervene. And uh, one of the uh, recommendations is to implement this uh, moratorium on uh, demorage and detention fees, which is part of the local charges being imposed by international uh, shipping lines. No? And, uh, and uh, this issue, uh, let me uh, share with you, has already uh, re reached also the attention of the U.S. President. No? So that's why uh, President Biden uh, last July issued uh, an executive order no? uh, basically directing the Federal Maritime Commission to, re to review uh, ocean shipping uh, charges. And uh, we are uh, monitoring this uh, intently uh, because we want also to, to see how the U.S. will uh, address uh, this uh, issue uh, that we have been um, feeling or that we have been confronted with you know, uh, for almost a decade now. Okay, so, but uh, going back to uh, the Philippines, um, uh, there has already been bills no, filed um, to address this issue. Uh, one was sponsored by Congresswoman Herrera D and the other one was uh, by uh, uh, Representative Ong. And I'm pleased to inform you that uh, a couple of days ago, um, the committee report uh, 1366 uh, was uh, approved by the Committee of uh, Transportation. And uh, there's now a substitute bill, you know, basically reconciling these two bills you know, that will be uh, sent to the plenary for uh, debate. Okay, the third issue has to do with pass-through fees. You know? So we know that LGUs are imposing uh, this so-called uh, pass-through fees, you know? whether in the form of regulatory fees or, or other kinds of fees. You know? And as early as um, 2006, you know, uh, there was already a um, memorandum circular that was issued by uh, the Department of Interior and Local Government, DILG, saying that uh, uh, or admonishing or encouraging the local government uh, units not to impose these uh, pass-through fees. No? Uh, so these are just examples no, of the, the fees that are uh, being uh, uh, imposed no, to uh, our local uh, logistics uh, providers. Okay, so now we have the Anti-Red Tape Authority and today, uh, in fact, uh, um, ARTA has this uh, EODB or Ease of Doing Business Summit no? 
uh, happening uh, since 8 in the morning until uh, 4 this afternoon. So, and uh, let me just uh, share with you because you are here, not there, attending the uh, EODB Summit of ARTA, that uh, ARTA has this uh, program called um, Nehemiah, uh, the National Effort for the Harmonization of Efficient Measures of Interrelated Agencies. No? And the objective of this is to reduce uh, the regulatory burden. And uh, one of the, fortunately, one of the key sectors here is uh, logistics. No? And uh, uh, as a result of our advocacy on past two piece, um, ARTA together with DILG and the Department of Finance issued uh, Joint Memorandum Circular 2021. No? So this year, basically uh, providing omnibus guidelines for the suspension of this uh, LGU uh, pass-through fees. No? And to support this, uh, ARTA, uh, in collaboration with uh, RESPOND, um, is also um, developing this uh, unified logistics uh, pass uh, system. No? So the objective is to establish a common platform for track verification via this uh, so-called quick response code and then also streamlining and harmonizing the processes no? yeah, in, this, uh, in securing tracking permits no? and also to develop a central repository of registered truck for higher units. Okay. Uh, uh, this is how uh, the ULP uh, system works. It's, uh, it's an app no? that can be downloaded using your uh, uh, phones and uh, you can uh, actually um, uh, the the trucks, you know, the delivery trucks that are um, uh, providing uh, logistic services you know, can be uh, registered uh, registered in this uh, system. Okay, and we are also trying to integrate this uh, ULP in the supply chain analytics dashboard that we we've uh, developed. Uh, uh, last year no, for the interagency task force um, or IETF. And we have expanded the dashboard to include the uh, zero hunger uh, program of the government and also the uh, price monitoring uh, system of the Department of Trade and Industry. Okay, so we are now down to the last uh, two issues, uh, four issues and the decoupling uh, of uh, the conflicting mandates of uh, some of our reg transport regulatory bodies. No? So for the port issues uh, we've seen last year, no? the imposition of uh, new charges and uh, new regulations and um, top of the list would be the, the green age fee that uh, is now being imposed at the uh, North Harbor. And then of course this proposed empty and uh, out of cage uh, container uh, cargo handling uh, fees no? and then the change in the reckoning of the, the free time for the storage. No? And then there's also these uh, petitions uh, submitted you know, to the port authority for by the uh, port operators you know, for an, uh, another round of uh, cargo handling uh, rate increases, 10% to the port of Manila and 15% uh, for the domestic uh, terminal. So uh, what we know is that the uh, petition for uh, the 10% rate increase you know, at the international terminals uh, have already been approved, but uh, the authority um, would, uh, suspended you know, the uh, implementation of the 15% uh, application for domestic uh, uh, increase in cargo handling uh, rate. Okay, now um, for the last uh, issue or, or topic, uh, we now go to the decoupling of uh, the regulatory and commercial functions of uh, PPA and CAP. And this is already enshrined uh, uh, in the Philippine Development Plan. So meaning we've succeeded in our advocacy. The government has recognized no, the problem no, that uh, arise no, from these uh, uh, conflicting mandates of uh, combining both regulatory and development functions uh, uh, in our regulatory agencies. No? So now, if you look at the uh, chapter 9B uh, of the Philippine Development uh, Plan uh, for 2017-2022, uh, it's very clear here no, that uh, there's this recommendation to revisit the management and regulation of ports to improve efficiency of port operations. And also, let me highlight, encourage competition among ports. No? The separation of regulatory and oper operational functions of port authorities and subsequent 
uh, establishment of a single entity uh, for port regulations may increase the efficiency and competitiveness of ports by allowing uh, one interport competition and encouraging more private sector participation. As you know, uh, in Davao, for example, you now have two uh, private commercial port operators there, so the ICT and the IHO port. And then uh, as part of the legislative agenda no, uh, contained in the Philippine Development Plan is this um, recommendation no, to um, enact a law creating independent regulatory bodies no, to address the weak and fragmented institutional setup. And uh, here, let me just read the last line. The existing dual roles of some agencies acting as both operator and regulator of transport facilities will be effectively eliminated. And as a result of these uh, bills have been filed in Congress no, to, to uh, affect these uh, recommendations. No? So uh, short-term recommendation on the part of, uh, for the Philippine Ports Authority is to rescind uh, letter of instruction 1005-A, which allows the authority to share from cargo handling revenues. Now, uh, remember, um, recall that um, the authority is the one that approves uh, the changes no, in the rates of for cargo handling uh, and but at the same time uh, it shares at least 10 to 20 percent you know, from this uh, uh, from the revenues generated from cargo handling uh, uh, services and operations no? the second is to decouple uh, the regulatory and commercial functions no? so again let me go back no um, in 2020 uh, in the same letter that was um, uh, submitted uh, to IATF by the private sector. Uh, well, again, another recommendation there is the precision of the uh, letter of instruction. Okay. And uh, I'm pleased to inform you that uh, a draft uh, executive order has already been forwarded to Malacanang for consideration. Okay. Now, um, finally, um, regarding the decoupling of uh, uh, the conflicting uh, mandates. No? So for the CAAP, uh, we have the um, uh, bill that seeks to create the Philippine Airport Authority, no? which will now be the, the operator of uh, airports. And then CAAP uh, will just uh, be the regulatory body no? for the aviation sector. And uh, the good news is that uh, addressing also another important aspect of it is the establishment of the National Transport Safety Board, you know, which will now be the body uh, that will be involved in ensuring uh, safety and worthiness of our uh, uh, airlines and uh, airports. And then finally, uh, for the port sector, uh, the recommendation is to, uh, to make the Philippine Ports Authority uh, just the uh, Philippine Ports Corporation that will be in, involved in uh, the operations uh, of, uh, and development of ports, but the regulatory function will now be transferred to the Maritime Industry Authority or Marina. Okay. So with this, uh, I hope I was able to give you a good update, a good picture of, of what's happening in the transport sector, something that, uh, of course, uh, um, affects you know, your uh, operations. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, good day and uh, Merry Christmas to everyone in advance. Thank you, Archie. Thank you very much, Doc Kenny. Of course, two decades of friendship with Essie, but thank you very much for your support. And thank you for the wealth of information that you shared this morning. Thank you, Doc. And Merry sure Christmas fine. to <laughs> Now it's time to hear from our featured speakers. Uh, from Umero Wines, uh, which was launched in late 2019, offering quality Australian wines to an increasingly discerning Filipino market. However, the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020 meant the brand found itself in different circumstances. There were logistical bottlenecks hampering distribution to its markets. There were liquor bans, ostensibly to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. There were changes in customer behavior as people became more wary of going into stores and shifted some of their shopping online. Now the brand continues its growth and is poised for bigger things as the country begins emerging from their worst 
of the pandemic and now marches towards the new normal. So joining us this morning is Jonathan Esperos, the general manager of Wine Brothers Philippines, the company behind Umera Wines. He is also assistant vice president for international sales of San Miguel Yamamura Packaging Corporation. With him this morning is Ms. Anna Isabel Lainez, the marketing manager of Wine Brothers Philippines. But before we give them the virtual floor, I'd like to remind everyone that you can leave your questions on the Zoom chat box or our Q&A box or as a comment on the Facebook page stream. We will get into them later during the open forum. And with that, let's give a warm welcome to Jonathan and his Anna. Thank you very much, Ochi, and uh, good morning to everyone. And thank you for inviting uh, Wine Brothers Philippines in this uh, SMAP program uh, to share our story amidst the current pandemic. Uh, but let me start by giving you first a background of our business. So Wine Brothers Philippines is the wine company of San Miguel Yamamura Packaging Corporation and under the corporate umbrella of San Miguel Corporation. Uh, we take care of the marketing and distribution of the wine brand Woomera in the Philippines. The Woomera brand is San Miguel's own and it is filled in our fully owned wine filling facilities in Australia, which are located in its different states. So we are, in terms of the business in Australia, we are in the business of uh, being an independent wine filling group. And uh, to date, we are the biggest wine independent wine filling company in Australia under the San Miguel Yamamura Austral Asia Group. Now, Wimmer Wines is a new entrant in the local wine market. We just started introducing the in the Philippine uh, market Woomera uh, just last July 2019. So just imagine in the market for just nine months, then the lockdowns and liquor bans happened in March of 2020. Our marketing, selling, and distribution programs suddenly met many unexpected hurdles. Because of the effects of the pandemic, of course, in the way we live our lives and the effects of the lockdown, we encountered some unique challenges in distribution, in marketing, and there was a different case of consumption. Since wine is a celebratory drink, it is consumed and enjoyed much in gatherings like weddings, parties, and these events came to a halt last year. So Comonte, ang mga gatherings, parties, wherein we enjoyed drinking our, not just wine, but any celebratory drinks or alcohol drinks during that time. Well, since nobody knows what happens in a pandemic or a lockdown, our team has to be very observant and very keen on how to respond well and properly to sustain the brand and the business. We are just very young, nine months, in would say in the womb of the wine market in the Philippines and suddenly this change uh, of scenario uh, comes to us. The first challenge is on the distribution. The ECQs and GCQs paved the way for the work from home arrangement, which uh, I think most of us have experienced and still doing, and the rise of the stay at home entertainment or now what we call as home payment. People will still indulge in some sort of entertainment and relaxation, but this time we are restricted at home. The bars and restos were either closed or have a reduced capacity for its customers or patrons. To make sure that Woomera Wine can participate in the new trend of home payment, 
wine, the Wine Brothers sales team worked double time in developing our off-prem retailers, such as supermarkets and superstores, and even convenience stores to make sure that the consumers have easy access if they want to have a wine night with Woomera or just chill out while watching a movie in Netflix. We also jump into the world of online shopping and marketplaces by having our wines listed and made available in the top online selling platforms like Lazada, Shopee, Boozy, Winery.ph, and the like. The pandemic really accelerated the use of the online shopping apps, which is, I believe, very instrumental in the continuous flow of goods to the consumers, even in a lockdown scenario. And these online uh, shopping platforms are not just like third party to us because San Miguel also launched its own online shopping, shopping platform for the San Miguel products. This is called the SMC Hub, wherein you can get uh, the different products of San Miguel, including our Womero wines uh, in this uh, website or platform. Uh, just like any other online selling platforms, you can just click the brand, uh, give your delivery address and uh, pay for the goods online and you can enjoy our products right away. The new normal also made us rethink on our marketing strategies, specifically in the mode of communication. Our marketing focused more on going digital since almost all of those at home, including us, including myself, are glued to their smartphones or smart TVs or computers, scrolling over Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. So our team learned on how to use the algorithms that are being, uh, well, utilized in this social media platforms or social media apps. And with this, we saw it as a very good tool to expand the reach of the Woomera brand. So the pandemic really brought about a lot of things uh, on the positive side, not just uh, the lockdowns, not just the quarantine, uh, but also accelerated us, the Philippines, to be able to use the digital uh, platform for our uh, transport, sorry, for our uh, buying of goods or for our marketing uh, programs. And well, these have been used widely already in other countries, but I guess last year was really a, a big jump start for uh, the market in the Philippines. Now, consumption of wines in a quarantine situation was also one of the things that we were trying to think about. Since gatherings are prohibited, the consumers will be encountering instances when you open a 750 ml bottle and then some or some of the wine, there'll be a big chance that you may not be able to finish it in one sitting since nasa bahay lang tayo, we might be sharing it with a loved one or uh, someone with you uh, in the house. But sometimes you have to put it in a fridge and we have a difficult time of what to do next with the leftover wine. Because as we all know, uh, white wines is are best to drink within 24 hours. And from opening the bottle for a red wine, it's best to drink within two to three days. So Wine Brothers thought of maybe there's an opportunity there and something that we could offer of value to our consumers or patrons that will enable them to enjoy our wines but not have it oxidized when they let they have an open bottle in their fridge or it will lose its intended palate or taste. So what we thought of is maybe there is a market wherein we could have our patrons enjoy a freshly poured wine coming from a, an innovative package. Because we all know that when we want to drink a beverage, just like uh, any other beverage, we want it to be 
as fresh as possible to enjoy the experience of this drink. So Wine Brothers ventured into a packaging innovation. So we are introducing very soon, well, actually a few days for now, from now, in the market, our new Woomera wine in cans. So this is a single serve package, a 250 ml in, a, in an easy to open, easy, easy to store and a carry everywhere aluminum can. Like in our glass bottles, the Woomera in cans is also filled in San Miguel's own facilities in Australia specifically in Mildura, Victoria. And uh, today, the, we are privileged to have the SC map as the first big group to which the Woomera in cans is being presented. So you may be able to purchase this uh, can or even a box of it. Um, I think this weekend in one of the superstores, well, it's Landers, uh, wherein you can be able to enjoy, well, firsthand, uh, this innovative package that uh, we have developed for our wine. To explain more and to talk more about this new offering for Woomera, um, I have with me Ms. Uh, Anna Lainez, our marketing head, uh, to explain uh, the benefits or the differentiation of the package for Woomera. So, Anna, if you may. Thank you so much, Sir John. Um, good morning to everyone. I'd like to thank SEMAP for giving us the opportunity to share our experience with everyone. And um, let me just share my screen. I hope everyone can see it right now. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So um, for this morning, I'll be focusing on the innovations that we've done at Wine Brothers Philippines. And to start with, I'd like to share a famous quote that says, necessity is the mother of invention. But in our case, since we were not given the privilege of inventing wines, we will settle with necessity is the mother of innovation. You see, Wine Brothers Philippines was just introducing women wines to the market when the pandemic hit. And of course, we know a lot of industries have been affected by the pandemic, and the alcoholic beverage industry is no stranger to that. With the shutdown of a lot of restaurants and bars, food and beverage companies have focused on at-home consumption. And this posed um, a challenge and an opportunity for our business. As uh, we know, um, our products, Wimero Wines, are not exactly classified as an essential product. Although if you asked us, um, we believe that alcohol is essential for us to be able to deal with um, the stress of, of the pandemic as well. But uh, kidding aside, it's not exactly an essential product that um, we allocate a budget for. Aside from this, uh, the product is often consumed in a social setting or consumed with company. So because of the pandemic, uh, there has been a couple of restrictions uh, prohibiting us to be able to enjoy the product with uh, other people. Lastly, consumption of the product is ambience driven, which means people often consume the product in certain settings. As mentioned earlier, uh, wines are often consumed in bars, restaurants, parties, and other celebratory events. So with the lingering challenge that the pandemic posed, um, we couldn't very well just sit back and wait for the situation to improve before we can sustain the business. How did we address the challenge then? Of course, it's very critical for us to be able to get to know the market again and again. Our target market for Woomera Wines are working professionals who love to travel, dine out, uh, they are di digital natives and immigrants who love to experience or who are very much into trying out new experiences and they always look for value for money. They also love taking vacations to relax and be able to reward themselves after a hard day's work. Since the pandemic started though, a big chunk of what our target market enjoys have been restricted. You all know that we can't really travel around. Um, dining out has been prohibited as well. Vacations have been put to a halt and such. And with the change in, in the, the likes of our target market, we needed to re-familiarize ourselves 
with our market and ask questions specific to the situation and observe how our market addresses them. So in getting to know our market, we had to ask questions. Um, how are they coping? What do they want? What are they drawn to? How are they responding to the whole situation? What are they looking for? So in our observation, we noticed that um, people or our market have been coping in various ways. As we all know, uh, we've all done a couple of trends that um, have been um, floating back in 2020 and even 2021. We're very familiar with the Dalgona coffee and then Ube cheese pandesal and then sushi bake. So I, I, I'm sure that one or a couple of us have dabbled in, in those trends as well. This shows that uh, our market is very much open to trying out new things still. And then what do they want and what are they looking for exactly? Um, our market is still they still want to be able to enjoy the same dining experiences at home. So that's why there has been a rise in um, food deliveries from restaurants to um, cater the food, the same food to our homes. And then restaurants also developed a couple of food kits that people can enjoy at home. Next is how are they responding? Um, our market continue to keep the connections with family and friends Thus, the rise of uh, video conferences like Zoom and other apps so that help people connect with each other. And then lastly, what are they drawn to? Since dealing with a pandemic is so stressful, people, or our market specifically, are very much drawn to um, experiences so that can help them deal with the stress and be able to reward themselves so that they can um, take care of their mental health as well. So now that we have been able to reacquaint ourselves with our target market, it is now important for us to be able to focus on our core as a company. So as Wine Brothers Philippines, how can we address the pain points of our market? We at Wine Brothers, of course, our mission is to provide a range of quality wines that can be enjoyed in every occasion and be able to immerse Filipinos into the fun culture of wine drinking. We offer products that are international quality, but specifically crafted for the Filipinos. So with that, being able to assess our strengths, our core, and uh, trying to address uh, the pain points of our market, we were able to identify an opportunity for a new product, which is the Womero Wines in Cats. So these are products, uh, sweet wines, that are packaged in 250 ml aluminum cans. Now, People are probably asking why sweet kinds and uh, why sweet wines in particular. Now you see, sweet wines are very easy to drink. There's no need for aging, which is um, one of the benefits of filling the wines in bottles and in corks. And uh, sweet wines are often consumed uh, chilled as well, so it's very much perfect for the Philippine weather. And um, Filipinos love sweets as well, as we all know. Our spaghetti is sweet. Sometimes even some of our dishes are sweet. So we wanted to focus on something that our, our market, the Filipino market, would really enjoy. So we decided to uh, put uh, sweet wines in 250 ml cans. Now, aside from that, the 250 ml cans are, because of the size, it's easy to store, it's easy to carry, so it's very portable. With the unique um, product, you know, with the innovation that we've introduced to the market, a lot of people are probably wondering how can this uh, change the market? And so with that, there are a lot of questions that come with it, <clears throat> excuse me, that come with it as well. So one of the questions that we are often asked um, is, how is it different? How is uh, Woomera Wines in Cans different from the ones in the bottles? Basically, the same product that we package is the same. So it goes through the same process. It is the same quality wines that we provide in bottles, but it comes in a different packaging and serving size. So that's the only difference that you can see. And so some people would also ask, and I think this is one of the most asked questions, um, does it affect, does the new packaging affect the taste of the wine? 
generally, uh, since we are using the same product, we are packaging the same product, it shouldn't affect the taste of the wine as long as it's actually stored properly. So if you can store the wines um, with no fluctuating temperature, which means it's not going to be placed in a very hot um, environment and then in a very cool environment, if the, the temperature is steady, then it's going to be okay. If you store it away from direct sun so that it doesn't affect the quality of the product, then it's okay as well. And it's stored away from vibrations and humidity, which is actually um, the, the 250 ml packaging, aluminum can packaging, helps in, in making sure that the product integrity is uh, kept intact. And then how do you store the wines properly again? You should store it with no fluctuating temperatures away from direct sun exposure, away from vibrations and humidity as well. So with this, um, how does this product uh, address the pain points that our market has exactly? Um, there are a lot of um, benefits that our product uh, offer. So it's very convenient. It's very approachable. Um, the serving portion is just right for consumption. It's simple, it's easy, it's easy in different aspects. You know, it, you can just um, open it. You don't need a corkscrew, you don't need a wine glass. It's easy to consume and it's easy to enjoy. It's very portable and it's faster to chill because of the aluminum packaging as well. So going back to the pain points of our market, um, how does this innovation address the pain points of our market? As we've asked earlier, um, we, we asked the question, how are they coping exactly? And we've noted that our market is very much open to trying out new things, which means there is an opportunity for us to introduce a new product that can excite them and intrigue them at the same time. Also, since the Philippine market is not a wine drinking market yet, our market is very much open to embracing new products and novelties within the industry. So they're not going to be um, they're not going to be snobbish about uh, a new product or a new packaging for the wines. And then next, what do they want? What uh, what are they looking for exactly? As we mentioned earlier, the market is looking for a semblance of normalcy, even when quarantined at home. And they want to be able to enjoy the same dining experiences at home. So with Wilmer Wines and Cans, you can actually enjoy the wines at home without necessarily having a sommelier around to explain the wines, um, without having the whole ritual of opening the bottles and serving it, without having a long list of wines that are sometimes too complicated to say. So we just point out which ones we want. And with that, it's easy for us to be able to just enjoy the drink, um, you know, get a can from the fridge, um, pull the tab, and then it's easy as um, one, two, three, enjoy the product when you are having dinner or just watching your favorite series on Netflix. And then next is how are they responding to the pandemic? As I mentioned earlier, they, uh, our, our market continues to keep the connection with uh, family and friends through video conferences and um, other apps that keep them um, connected. Uh, but of course, um, maintaining physical distance and since the rise of the Inuman, uh, it's been very difficult for drinkers to just finish a whole bottle. As mentioned by um, Sir Nisperas earlier, it's, easy, it's, it's not easy for one person to finish a whole bottle, a whole 750 ml bottle in one sitting. So with a smaller portion size of Pumera wines in 150 ml cans, um, it, it kind of relieves you of the pressure to finish the whole bottle. Aside from that, it gives the drinker the options to change its, uh, the drink as well. So you don't necessarily feel guilty about not being able to finish the whole bottle. You can just shift from, let's say, Woomera White Moscato to Woomera Sweet Red. And then if you want to go back to Woomera White Moscato, then you can just very, very well do so. And then lastly, what are they drawn to exactly? Um, since dealing with a pandemic is such a stressful experience, the market is drawn to things that can help them relax, that can help them feel good, and um, that can help them deal with the whole situation. So with this, having a product that's very easy, hassle-free, you can consume um, very easily, basically, 
And it also gives you the notion that it's healthy because wine is often perceived as a healthy product. Um, it helps the, the, the market be able to enjoy something um, without necessarily being um, stressed about the nature of the product itself. So with them, they can feel rewarded after a long day or a very stressful experience during the day. And then lastly, uh, we actually, um, we, in our company, we don't just react. We anticipate and we prepare for, for the situation. So we, as we ease into the new normal, more people will be clamoring to go out and reconnect with family and friends. So we are anticipating a resurgence of travel and we are expecting people to be going out of their houses because they have been cooped up for so long. And so the nature of our product, Boomerang Wines in Cans, is very much appealing for outdoor consumption. And with that, we are preparing for the change in behavior in the market because we are anticipating that people will be wanting to be outside, you know, going to the beach or going to the parks or, or going to or go camping with family and friends. So we prepared a product or we are introducing a product that they can bring with them to be able to enjoy as well. So with the changes brought about the pandemic, uh, we'll always be on the lookout for how we can make Boomerang Wines be part of our markets every occasion. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Anna, for, for that. Um, and uh, well, I would have really wanted or uh, be glad if we, we have done this uh, presentation to you live, uh, meaning face to face. Uh, uh, so that we could have our own uh, portion of wine tasting. But I think the second best thing is for some of you to be able to taste our wines. And if you would allow me, Ochi, I would just like to have a little, a short game uh, for, for, for those attending here. So I just have two questions and we'll give uh, a pack of our new Boomer wine in cans for those first five persons who will answer uh, the questions. Uh, first question, and please uh, put it on your chat, uh, on the chat box. Is first question is from what country is a woman wine being fermented and filled? You can put it in chat box. First five answers uh, for that. Uh, we'll give a special pack of the woman wine in cans, a four pack uh, combo, uh, two cans for. Um, Sweet red wine and two cans for white Moscato. And the second question, another first five. Uh, what is the new innovative product or package offering of Woomera? So just place it in the chat box and uh, maybe uh, Anna, Anais, uh, can you please take note of the names in the chat box and we'll uh, email it to the SEMAP and uh, as our colleague, uh, Mr. Marvin Casipe, to send this Woomera wine in cans combo pack to those lucky, lucky patrons or lucky participants who gave their answers. So thank you very much. Woomera is uh, in five varieties, uh, Cabernet Merlot, Rosé, Sauvignon Blanc, sweet red wine, and white Moscato. So as we say uh, in our Woomera uh, team, our tagline, is start the fun and uh, anticipating that we could already start the fun this coming Christmas season. And uh, thank you for listening and God bless to all. Okay, thank you very much, Jonathan and Anna for that wonderful presentation and for the game that allowed us to partake of your wine. Thank you very much. So we will now have our open forum and we are still waiting for your questions on the chat box or the Q&A box. Uh, but now I uh, would like to invite another one of our partners from Path Respond who will be presenting this morning's reaction. Dr. Hussein Lidasan is the Dean of the School on Urban and Regional Planning of the University of the Philippines. He has served the university in various capacities over the past decades was also a president of the Transportation Science Society of the Philippines and was involved 
in various studies on transport planning, intermodal logistics, and regional transport policies. Let us give a warm welcome to Dean Lidasan. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be part of this interesting webinar. Indeed, it would have been more interesting if it's face-to-face. Uh, -face. So uh, allow me to share my screen. Is it all right? Can you see? Yes, you can see it now, Dean. Thank you. So, uh, wait, I'm not that big yet. Okay. Uh, I prepared two slides showing uh, my uh, remarks or comments on the presentation that we just uh, listened to. Of course, uh, we all know that um, wine or winery has several key factors, especially in, con in the context of logistics. Listening to the presentation, indeed, uh, they also could look at uh, wine also, not just as a cost factor, but also as a basic challenge, especially with our recent uh, pandemic or ongoing pandemic. But I'm sure in the next few months, they will uh, uh, once again um, be in business too. Second, uh, we all know also not just because of the pandemic, but because of the new innovations that they mentioned, latest technology, especially ICT and disruptive innovations become essential in the whole logistics system process. I don't need to elaborate, but I will just uh, mention these things like in fleet management, routing, distribution, among others, are key in the wine uh, logistics. And these were also mentioned earlier, especially for the storage and uh, delivery because of the uh, delicate products. And Urban planning and transport planning are vital because we all know that the volume of wine consumption is mostly in the major urban areas and metropolitan areas. So as such, it is important that this, the, the transport requirements should also be incorporated in urban planning and transport from the raw materials up to the finished products, to these groceries, to the stores, to the restaurants, hotels, etc. And also, it goes without saying, delicate storage and transport facilities need to be properly planned and in place. And again, as already mentioned, with the current pandemic, ICT plays a further role, not only in the wine logistics, but also in consumer requirement. Uh, fourth party logistics was already mentioned, and fourth party logistics is the next generation from uh, third party, of course. And we know that maybe. After this, there will be more uh, innovations, but for fourth party logistics, it will not only uh, reduce the cost of transporting or uh, management, but it will also contribute in reducing carbon emission. Likewise, uh, it was already also mentioned, the need for economical, lighter, more environmentally friendly containers, of course, they mentioned about the cuts, but Use of flexi tanks for more, uh, uh, more volume and the shipment of loose wine in bulk instead of pre-filled wine bottles to reduce weight and transport volume. Also, it contribute in the re reduction of carbon footprints. This will efficiently streamline in-house wine logistics. Again, as already mentioned, organization, IT supported documentation, efficiency through modern or fully automated high rate storage systems with driverless pork, leaf trucks and industrial trucks become popular. And of course the first in, first out uh, principle will, is one of those things that this will benefit then. Logistics and distribution in wine industry need significant level of organization. And IT supported documentation and control. For instance, for B2B, business to business and business to uh, consumer deliveries. And of course, in the internet, as American, they've already mentioned about the ordering through the internet. So these are just my uh, comments on the presentations that were presented. And uh, thank you very much. And as Doc Henry mentioned, 
Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays in advance. Okay. Thank you very much, Dean Lidasan, for your reaction on the presentation of Women Rewinds. So finally, it's time for our open forum. We'd like to invite our moderator for this morning, the team leader of UPAF Respond, Dr. Gilbert Lianto. He is also a member of the Board of Trustees as well as a former president of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, a think tank providing policy recommendations and guidance to various government players. So he's a renowned player in research and development. He previously served as executive director of the Agricultural Credit Policy Council of the Department of Agriculture and as undersecretary of the National Economic and Development Authority. Please welcome Dr. Lianto. Dr. Lianto. Thank you, Mrs. Choa. I'm just a moderator and not speaker, so why did you have to introduce me? <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Generous. Good morning, Dr. Gilbert. Good morning, Dean Nidasan. And congratulations to the presenters uh, from uh, Henry to Jonathan and to Ms. Laines, and of course to you, Dean. Now the floor is open for, uh, for any question or point of clarification that you may want to raise to the speakers. We have a very nice and I think very appealing topic this morning. It's about <laughs> wines. And uh, I think Mr. Cho is, uh, has a question to raise and maybe she can uh, break the ice, so to speak. And I can follow suit by saying, why just sweet wine? What about the Cabernet? I'm not very particular about the sweet wines. There bang Cabernet can to follow suit, but let's first hear from Mr. Choa and the others. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to ask the Womera team, so how were you able to shift to the new packaging? Were there, how were you able to um, engage your suppliers, or in packaging suppliers to uh, be involved in this new innovation? Thank you, Ochi, for the question. Well, uh, as I mentioned at the start, the Wine Brothers Philippines outfit is under the San Miguel Yamamura Packaging Corporation uh, Company of San Miguel. So we are in the packaging business. And our um, main uh, business in Australia um, is uh, distributed into two types. One is supply of packaging materials in the Australia, in our for our Australian customers. Second is in the filling of wine uh, liquid in Australia. So we have bottling lines for glass bottles as well as canning lines. And uh, uh, we have a good network of suppliers as well, since uh, in Australia, it's not just only San Miguel uh, produced packaging that we send there coming from our plants uh, in the Philippines, uh, in Vietnam and in uh, China, but also we have partnership with other packaging manufacturers in Australia in, in itself. So the cans uh, is coming from our partner uh, in Australia. Our filling line for cans is owned uh, by San Miguel. Since uh, wine in cans in Australia is already, uh, well, we'll say very popular. Uh, and in terms of the technical capability, in terms of the supply for packaging, and in terms of the wine, where the wine will be sourced from, uh, we already have a good uh, amount of uh, partners with that. So it was not really a, a challenge uh, for us, that big a challenge to have this innovation, this new product innovation. So Anna just worked on for the Philippines of what kind of wine is best to be distributed here in the Philippines. So we started with the sweet line, which is the sweet red and the uh, white Moscato at this time. But I, as uh, Sir uh, Gilberto uh, mentioned earlier, we will be uh, following suit with the standard wines like a Cabernet Merlot or something that we have in our portfolio. Um, this is a very new and a very, well, I would say uh, trailblazing move for our company uh, to introduce uh, wine in a different package, which is cans. And uh, I'm sure, uh, some of the uh, younger ones like us 
would we'll be very interested to try it out. Uh, in fact, it's very good. It does not lose its quality. And at the same time, it picks, it fits perfectly uh, in your fridge or in your freezers as well. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Speros. There are two other questions here. One I may read from uh, Mr. Figueroa, the Q&A on Woomera wines. I may be asking too much because this product is new in the Philippine market. What significant correlation exists between the product features, one that is considered as order winner, and the revenues attributed to it? So will Mr. Speros or Ms. Lane is here to respond to that question? Anna, do you want to uh, respond to that question? Please repeat the question. Okay, it's in the QA, and I will read again, uh, Ms. Lainez. On Woomera wines, I, mean, I may be asking too much because this product is new in the Philippine market. Here's the question What significant correlation exists between the product features and the revenues and trip? So will this sell, will this uh, new product, especially the innovative packaging that you mentioned, will this bring in the revenues? If that could be yeah. interpretation of the question. And let's yeah. start it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so when we were uh, developing this new innovation for Woomera Wines, we observed how the market is also responding to our products, the initial product that we've launched. And we noticed that our best sellers are actually the sweet wines. So when, when we decided to um, innovate and put the wines in the 250 ml cans, we uh, were hoping that um, the popularity of our sweet wines will also carry the innovation of our 250 ml cans, Woomera wines in cans. So aside from that, we've also noted, we've, of course, we've um, studied the market that we are targeting for this one. Generally, the Woomera wines in cans, we are targeting uh, the younger, the younger market for this. And we, we've observed that they are more embracing of different novelties within the industry. So they're not very particular about, let's say, the, um, the, uh, the, the, what they call the variety of the wine, the vintage of the wine, even the preparations of the wine. So in terms of the experience, they're really after the taste and um, the overall novelty of, of the wines itself. So yeah. So with that, we believe that um, our market will be very supportive of the innovations that we are introducing to the market. Yeah, um, and just to add a little bit on uh, Anna's uh, answer, uh, we uh, always believe that the uh, value of your product is the main factor uh, wherein the consumers will patronize it or buy it. Uh, the revenues we will, will come after. So what we are focusing right now is the best value uh, that we can provide uh, to the wine drinkers or wine patrons uh, in terms of the product itself, the wine itself. Second, of how they can enjoy it more. So the proposition really is how can we offer something that the wine drinkers will enjoy, both the quality of the wine and how it will be consumed and what package it is best for them to enjoy it. Thank you, Mr. Esperos. This next question from uh, Mr. Hendrik Batalion is very, very interesting because what you have done in uh, Wine Brothers, uh, innovation you did, was I think disruptive of the industry. I think shifting from bottles to aluminum cans, you'll put the bottling companies and the producers out of business if this thing. <laughs> Picks up, no? But anyway, ito yung question ni Mr. Batalones. How do you intend to get past connotations that wine and packaging other than bottles are of lesser quality? Again, perception is a perception, no? Particularly as boxed wine and canned wine is not widely known here in the Philippines and for that matter in the rest of the world. So, baka maging connotation ito, soft drinks lang, o parang food juice association. So, how do you deal with this? Uh, Yes. Very interesting question. Yeah, very interesting. And th those are the things that we discussed thoroughly when we were thinking of, okay, we have this new packaging. 
we can produce it in our Australia facility, what are the possible perception hurdles that uh, uh, our consumers will have when we launch this uh, product? And, and again, uh, Anna shortly, briefly gave a, some FAQs, and that's one of the uh, frequently, frequently uh, asked questions uh, that uh, we encountered during our FGDs. Um, well, um, the innovation uh, really uh, is geared towards uh, being single serve, a single serve product, and uh, to make it more convenient. Uh, and there's always a market for that. We believe there's always a market for that. And we believe the generation right now uh, is very open to such innovations, such disruptive, uh, well, products. Uh, we could see a lot of products coming out right now that people tried and then later it boomed. So in terms of quality, uh, there may be a, per a perception that wine in bottles are uh, better or at best, I would say for the high end and wines that you need to store longer uh, in a certain packaging, in glass bottles is the best still. But for those items or some wines that we would like to offer in the market for uh, some, like, like the sweet red wines and the white Moscato, uh, we believe that the quality will not be uh, altered and uh, according to the technology that we gathered from our partners, technology partners, it indeed uh, preserves uh, the quality of the wines uh, that we uh, fill it in. So Anna, if you want to yeah. add something to that. Just to add to that, uh, one of the thrusts of the company is to really educate the market when it comes to wine drinking. And we do so by communicating various tips and guidelines on our social media pages and even on the approach of how we uh, market our wines. So as I mentioned earlier, Philippines is not exactly a wine drinking country yet as compared to the other countries in the world. Um, with that, we still have a very impressionable market. So they're very open to trying out new things. They're very open to um, um, venturing out what's, what's exciting for them as well. And as, uh, as a company, as a wine company, what we plan to do is to really help people discover what they like as opposed to dictating to them. This is what's good. This is what you should drink. What we want to do is to educate the market and guide them into discovering that, oh, this one works actually. And um, them to be able to enjoy the journey of um, discovering wine drinking as well. So yeah, in, in terms of changing the perception, it's not necessarily changing the perception, it's guiding them to discover what works for them. follow up on this last uh, discussion. They're saying, okay, uh, it's a very practical product. It can be easily transported and storage is not a problem. And chilling it is not an issue because uh, aluminum chills quite quickly. But then there's this other segment of the market which would still view a bottled wine as superior to one and a uh, kind of product. Not so perhaps if you're talking millennials, millennials would want to try uh, new things, uh, you know, wine to go, something like that. So you need cans. But uh, for the older guys, the middle, the middle-aged guys, uh, guys like me who I enjoy the ritual of uh, opening a bottle of wine, old course crew. And these are the guys who can really afford to buy, not, not me, see si Henry and see si, CPR si can really afford to buy, you know, these pricey wines. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah, uh, I do agree. Yeah, I do agree with you. Uh, I think we are the same uh, genre. <laughs> so uh, really, there are there's a segment that really enjoy wines and the experience of opening a bottle and then uh, swirling and then uh, okay. swearing the bouquet. Yeah, yeah. Like yes, one glass. That's correct. That's correct. And that's still. I think that's that's really the norm. That's how. I think worldwide, that's really how wine is being enjoyed. And uh, we, we, if you would take a look at our portfolio, our, our core is still on the 750 ml uh, wine in glass bottles. So we, that's, that's still the product uh, 
uh, that's mostly available uh, right now in the market. And we believe do uh, we do believe that uh, it's the package of preference right now. So we won't veer away from that. And uh, Boomera is not stopping there. Uh, I don't want to uh, preempt any uh, excitement, but uh, Anna is working on another product offering by early next year. So it's a another entrant uh, in terms of uh, the product that Boomera will be bringing to. Uh, the market for for people to enjoy so just to keep the excitement going there's a certain uh a variety that comes still from australia one of the fine wine regions in australia uh which I, i'm sure uh, you will enjoy and maybe uh, uh we can introduce them to you maybe next year early next year as well are you really saying yeah. uh, uh look at the range of products we have yes, we yes. Have one red one uh, yeah. According to us, uh, taste and need. Yeah. That's correct. Go, maybe the can <laughs> wine will be for you. For an older guy like I, myself and uh, Siguro si Henry, we we'll go for the bottle. We we'll go for the bottle. Anyway, yes. that's right. Yes, just to oh. wines. Anna, may, may, may tanong dito. What's the price for the wines? What age groups you are allowed to purchase them? What age groups? Well, actually, um, price, para, price muna nung ano? Price nung can. Mas mura ba yun kaysa bottle? I'll go yeah. for it. Mas mura. Um, well, if you if you look at it in an over or in a general sense, it's going to be um, more affordable because you don't necessarily have to purchase a whole bottle. So in terms of consumption, if you're just uh, looking to drink a little bit and you can actually have a different uh, varieties, then in that sense, it's more affordable. But of course, if you want to be able to enjoy the wines, um, you can definitely buy the 750 ml in terms of masulit siya because of the burger quantity. So economies of scale pa rin. But if you want option, if you want variety, then Woomera wines and cans would be affordable as well for you. So in terms of price range, um, our 750 ml is about 450 to 500 pesos, depending on the channels where you want to um, purchase them. So off-prem, online, and then on-premise as well. And then for the cans, um, you have to uh, stay tuned because we are launching the products in the supermarkets as well. Both Australian wines. Yellow tail. Saka yeah. yung, uh, there, Hope's End. Like I enjoyed Hope's End. Uh, hmm. You're familiar with that? Yeah. yeah. 550 yung Hope's End. Eh. Uh, yeah. Then they also uh, provide blends. May blended wine in sila. Anyway. Yeah. So what age groups are allow allowed to purchase then? Meron pang ano? Uh, restriction yun. Uh, yeah, of course. They, um, teenagers, can they just order this uh, online? Or? <laughs> well, of course, um, the, since this is still an alcoholic beverage, um, we have to follow the legal drinking age in the Philippines. So they can purchase, um, oh, 18, uh, 18 and above can purchase the wines, but uh, teenagers are not allowed to purchase our products. We never know. <laughs> Present an ID. Yes, validation <laughs> is important. Oh, Meron bang dalawa dito ang interesting questions, no? Uh, unless Mr. Nisperos wants to say something. Ako, okay, Doc Hubert. Uh, oh, sige, Doc Henry. Oh, Wag natin puntahan yung question ni Mr. Villoria and Mr. Pirovan. <laughs> Oh, kasi, uh, of course, uh, I, I go by the tradition also, of, you know, having that pleasure of uh, opening, uh, uncorking uh, wine, uh, a bottle of wine. No? But uh, then again, storage is also a problem. <laughs> That's why I'm uh, kind of interested uh, in this uh, new product no? because uh, if uh, it's just single consumption, then it's very convenient. So, yes. uh, of course, it's drive ka, you have that. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and also, <laughs> not, not, not in the bottle variety. Oh, no, the Gilbert, you know, mga ekonomista tayo, eh, no? oh. uh, economies of scale <laughs> versus uh, single consumption, and you're done. No? So, and the um, problem din kasi, um, you know, if uh, you're just the, the only person drinking it, diba? so you store it. Uh, you have a bottle, you store it, and if you don't drink every every day, so, you know, Dapat it, it, doesn't, all right, it doesn't uh, taste well. So, uh, single consumption is okay. Pero, advocacy ko lang siguro, uh, 
Lakin mo rin ng shiras. No? So, <laughs> so, okay din. Punta raw sila doon. So, oh, wala mo rin na doon eh. Oo. Oh, uh, sweet wine. Yeah. Can, can I take a note of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, can I ask a personal question? Personal. Yes. Yes. Uh, sir and ma'am. Uh, malimbawa, binaha ka, tapos, na ano yung uh, wine bottles mo, pero hindi naman, di pa naman nabuksan. Okay pa ba siya? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, the package, the, for example, it's glass. The integrity of the package of the glass bottle will really work well on how it will be sealed, like a cap or a cork. So even if it's submerged in water, uh, you, you bring it in the pool, as long as the screw cap or the cork is uh, does fit well, meaning the mechanical properties are not damaged, you should, you should uh, not have any problems with it. Pag paano ko nabuksan na, tapos yung as mentioned nga by Doc Henry, pag nabuksan na, pero... Wala na. Pwede, kasi may pasimula ah. kung makapasok yung ano, di ba, tubig. The, yeah, the problem, and as pag nabuksan na po, the, the integrity is already compromised, pwede na pumasok yung tubig, and the problem there is the oxidation. Yeah. Uh, mag-oxidize na yung wine, it will sour a little bit, it will be That's highly right. acidic. Oh. So, ang best po niyan, when we drink our wines, when we open <laughs> our bottle of wine, in two to three days for red, we consume it. Yeah. Uh, for white, in 24 hours, we consume it. Or else, we can just use it for cooking. Doc Hendry, tawagan mo nila ako pag gusto mo. Thank you very much for the advice. I got a time. We have two more questions. Sorry. Uh, to cut the conversation. Kasi na per topic. Kasi na yung topic natin. So, may questions si Mr. Figueroa. How do you manage the demand customer service gift time I think the question is in the Q&A box no? so just in case uh, because I think uh, the connection of uh, Dr. Yanto uh, dropped a little so you can check the Q&A I think uh, that's uh, that's where the question is. I would like to read it na lang din. How do you manage to demand lead time from the customer and service lead time from Humera? What score is achieved in fulfilling customer order on time in full? Okay. Um, the, the planning on our side, uh, uh, it's really dependent on two things, the forecasting and the, the, uh, the production at our end. The good thing is we own our own feeding line and we have partners uh, in Australia that can supply us the needed wine uh, on time. So um, it will really depend on the forecast first of our sales team of how much we would like to have in stock here and to be able to distribute it to our retailers. And we just uh, forward those to our production team in Australia. So uh, our Womera right now is being filled in two sites, one in Sydney and one in Nildura, that's in Victoria, New Melbourne. Um, um, so far, we, well, in terms of uh, the, the, the uh, market that we have and the volume that we have, it's very much manageable. And I, I do think that uh, we, we will have not uh, any problems with it. Uh, furthermore, in terms of logistics, we also have an integrated uh, uh, company uh, or we are integrated with the company for our logistics uh, process that is under Mr. Marvin Casipe, uh, who is the uh, uh, assistant vice president and uh, manager, uh, business, business manager for our logistics services. So they store our wines in their facility. We have enough stocks there uh, to meet the market demand. And at the same time, they're the ones who provide the, the tracking. Uh, towards our retailers. Um, so in terms of our supply chain, uh, we don't have any problem. Uh, uh, we have not uh, done any scores yet for that. Uh, what I would say 99.9%. I don't, I don't think we have any problem with it. In terms of fulfillment. Last question, and then we can uh, wrap up. I seem to miss a question of Mr. Deloria. He was asking about ULP when it will be implemented. You might want to take that question. Oh, ULP. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass it on to uh, Rafi Rivera. Rafi. Rafi. Uh, who's our uh, uh, deputy team leader in charge of that uh, activity? Yeah. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, 
uh, the plan is to have a site development by January. So uh, initial uh, uh, implementation by site, no, yung mga priority sites. Uh, originally, there, were, there, there are nine priority sites. Then from January to uh, June next year, there will be a set uh, of trainings with the stakeholders and the, the, uh, the turnover to LTFRB by ARTA because LTFRB was the assigned agency to uh, absorb the technology will happen uh, by uh, based on the schedule no, on uh, June uh, 2022. Now in terms of the challenges, so uh, uh, there are individual challenges that we are encountering right now, for example, uh, mga, may mga systems that were being developed, for example, si PPA, so meron siyang uh, uh, apparently may, Q, may QR code na siya dinidevelop, so we're trying to integrate it to that system. Tapos si SBMA, so may mga, and other echo zones, may mga concerns pa lang, may din sila, but yung nga, yung strategy namin with ARTA and DEVCO na uh, we deal with, uh, we uh, meet with them individually para ma-address namin yung uh, concerns at uh, so that when we fully implement and we fully uh, launch this uh, app, eh, ano po, uh, fully do po at uh, planchado po from all parties. Ang, uh, right now, ang uh, inaasikas in, in, in po ni Arta is yung, uh, yung, um, yung uh, MOA. No? So we're finalizing it kasi aside from the app, para mas effective yung pag-implement po ng app nito, kailangan natin yung MOA. So patapos na po, so napapinalize na po yung mawa, soon mapipirmahan na rin po yan once ma-address po yung mga uh, concerns ng ibang uh, agencies. At uh, malaking tulong po yan no, for, uh, for a product like wine and other essential products kasi nga it, it aims to uh, enhance yung uh, movement ng mga commodities, especially during the uh, post-pandemic so, as we learn no, from our uh, private sector participants here. Uh, malaking bagay din yung logistics and distribution. So with, with the ULP uh, being implemented, uh, 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 mapapabilis na at magiging efficient yung pag-distribute ng goods. And we are happy na si SEMAP and other private sector players are very supportive of this uh, initiative. So yun po. In short, uh, January, start na po ng site development and by hopefully by June 2022, maturn over na po natin sa LTFRB. Yeah. Uh, Doc Gilbert, very brief comment lang. I just want to uh, mention that Dr. June Viloria or Oligari, Oligari Viloria was a former colleague of mine at NCTS and it, he was also a faculty of the school years ago. And that time he was one of the logistics expert, experts in the country. But he's now based in uh, the US. Just for everybody to know them. Thank you. Guru, nice. Guru. Okay, thank you, Dilidasan, for that uh, information. The time flies so fast. I was told that we have to wrap up and I will turn over. Thank you for the questions and all the participants. Turn over to Ochi. Wrap up. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Lianto. Uh, we'd like to have a quick photo op so that we can document this event, our last SMAP Live for 2021. So maybe call on... Uh, Henry Basilio, our marketing director. Uh, Let's go through. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, everyone look at the screen, webcam in one, two, three. Okay, we are good. Gochi, back to you. Okay. So, uh, we'd like again to thank our um, panelists for this morning's uh, event. Of course, from Woomera Wines. Uh, Jonathan Speros and Anna Lainez. And from the, for the team from UPA, respond Dr. Lianto, Dr. Henry Basilio, and Dean Lidasan for entrusting us with your time for this morning. So that wraps up our edition of SEMAP Live, but there will be more events in 2022, whether it be virtual or fingers crossed physical. You can be updated by visiting our website, esimap.org, or by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So for now, I'm Ana Rose Ochoa, and on behalf of everyone as Esimap and PAF Respond, I'd like to wish you all a meaningful Christmas and a prosperous, healthy, and resilient 2022. We hope to see you soon. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>